Hi there, I'm Buddha, and you're watching Dr. Guitar, a show for all you guitarists out there. If you subscribe to the channel, you probably noticed that I've been releasing some music videos from December till now. That's my new record. One, it's a big project. It's it's called Portugal desde a raiz, which means Portugal from its roots. And basically what it is, is me traveling around the country and I invited eight different musicians, eight different artists from the, the traditional music scene in Portugal, so the roots music in Portugal, for together to create a new song. And in two days we recorded and created, well, first we created and recorded a, the, a new song. But first of all, let me thank my dear patrons for supporting the show. And of course, if you want to become a patron yourself, just go to the link, follow the steps, super easy. You'll be getting early access to episodes, a free backing track every month, and a free video lesson every week. And of course, my huge thank you. You can also contribute to the tip chart on PayPal, or if you're interested in guitar lessons or vocal lessons with me, just send me an email or a direct message via Instagram or Facebook, and we'll go with it from there. You can also go to my website, buragedge.com, and you have a store there where you can buy, for example, the record, and you can buy all my records, you can buy gear, etc. But let's go. This is the artwork, and that is me side by side with a huge tree. This was taken in Alentejo, which is in the south east of Portugal. So I invited eight different musicians and the goal was for them to start up the idea of a song that represents their region in music. So that was my challenge to them and then I would create with them and try to arrange the song in a pop format. So in order for us to have a verse, a chorus, and in order for it to be ear candy and to be uh, a good pop song with traditional roots. I didn't want to make the song be bluesy uh, on purpose because uh, usually everyone associates me with blues playing, especially here in Portugal. But I love a lot of different genres. I, I love metal, I, I love funk, I love jazz, I love MPB, uh, bossa nova, all, all, all genres, I, soul music, uh, rock, of course. So I don't consider myself to be a one-style guy. I like a lot of styles. I like the Beatles' approach to that. Every song is a song, and then make it happen and enjoy it. So what I did was I worked with all these musicians and in today's episode I'll, I'm explaining just a little of what I did and showing you some results. You can then watch the video of each track and get to know the songs better. My first guest was Mia Mora. She's from Porto and she has a quartet, a Fado quartet. Fado is one of the more conventional, traditional Portuguese music. And it's very healthy at the moment, so a lot of people are doing it really well. Mia is a great singer. She's really young, but she's a great singer. We got together in Porto, and uh, I, we got together through Miguel Silva, who's the guitar player, the Portuguese guitar player. Portuguese guitar is an, a very traditional instrument, and he's an incredible player, too. So we talked about, and he, he came up with uh, Fado Menor, do Porto, which, which is like a, fa a minor fado from Oporto City. Um, it's a structure, like in, in many uh, traditional music, you have structures with names attached to it. Sometimes it's the name of the song that, that it first appeared. Sometimes it's the name there of the place people played it, whatever. So Fado Menor do Porto was the inspiration, and we built upon that. I changed it a little into a bolero feel and one of the guitar players the the acoustic guitar player the nylon guitar player did a minor six chord 
uh, on the root chord, and I loved it. So I engaged that, and I thought, how can I fit here? Well, I'm singing, but I'm also playing guitar. So I didn't want my guitar to be rhythmic because they already had a bass and a rhythm guitar. So I played slide. <laughs> Actually, I played a lot of slide in this record because it fits the acoustic instruments really well. It's like another melody. It's like another v uh, singer, but it doesn't uh, crowd the mix too much and it allows the band to breathe and to, to explode. So this first song is kind of a bolero uh, meets fado and I want it to be a, a really strong song with some electric guitar movement very influenced in Ry Cooler. All the context, the concept of the of the record was influenced by Ry Cooler's work, especially the Buena Vista Social Club, but all the other ones, the Ali Farca Touré and the Mambo Sinuendo, where he goes to Mexico to play with Mexican musicians. On the second song, the second artist I invited is Augusto Canales. <laughs> He's from the north of Portugal, northwest of Portugal, so close to the sea, from Viana do Castelo, properly. And he plays what we call Cantares ao Desafio, ou Desgarrada, which is uh, basically improvising lyrics in real time. And it's usually uh, very comic and very... Uh, challenging. It's usual, usually a challenge between two singers, so they challenge each other and they do rhymes, kind of like the um, the hip hop and rap artists do the the rap uh, battle. Is incredible player and he has a lot of records in his career, so it was a great pleasure to to do it with him. We did a song called Aunskpoding, which means some can and some don't based on all of the things we're living in Portugal now and probably a lot of places in the world you can relate to this. It was thinking about a marchinha or a malhão, which are two different styles of music. We ended up on the marchinha. Then, again, I put my slide in. And I bluesed it up a little. It's kind of a Ray Charles-ish. So I jazzed it up. I put some more chords in it and spice up the harmony a little. And the song was really, really funny. The lyrics are unbelievable. I'm just sorry if you don't understand Portuguese because they are perfect. Every song was recorded 
in a different location, not in the studio. So we went to a specific place where my guests are from, and we recorded there. So with Canario, we recorded in Santuin, which is a really rustic, really old. It's 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 a touristic thing, but it's it's really the north of Portugal, um, like Disneyland characterized. So it's kind of it's th theatrical, but it's it, it represents the north of Portugal with a lot of caskets for wine. Uh, it's 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 mimicking uh, traditional people's party in the north of Portugal. So we went to this magic place and we, we finally ended up there by Canary's su suggestion. So we recorded the whole band with playing live with just 12 tracks. So I took my Apollo 4 X or my Apollo X4, I think it's how it's called. And then I took my Lynx Aurora 8, which is eight converter uh, analog to digital and digital to analog. And my Audient ASP 8000, I think it's how it's called, or 800, so eight mic pre's, and that's what I had, eight mic pre's from the audience going into the links via ADAT to the Apollo 4, and the four mic pre's in the Apollo 4. 14 mus musicians were <laughs> recorded with Canario, which 12 tracks, yes, you can do it. And we did it live, because I like the live performance a lot. The, the band mixes together way better, so everything was done live. And we recorded everything in video, too. My third guest was Galandunga Londaina. They were actually the reason why I did this record, because they inspired me so much. Before I get to know them, I thought, like, traditional music was very poor and very um, amateur, because that's what I knew. But when I met Galandunga Londaina, I, I was blown away by their groove, their musicality. They are an incredible band. And I thought, like... Well, actually, the problem is me. It's not the traditional Portuguese music. It's me who doesn't know good traditional music. So I went on a mission to figure it out and to find out the good things about Portuguese traditional music and try to make it contemporary. Because I think that's the thing we should do in music. Music needs to stay up to date. You cannot leave it in the past. So otherwise, you're doing a museum kind of job or an historian kind of job, but not a musician or an artist kind of job. That's what I actually do with my blues. I play my blues, my version of the blues, in the 21st century. I don't play Chicago blues or early Delta blues because I'm not from there. I'm not black. I don't have that heritage. So I can't do that. They did it really well. What I can do is be inspired by what they did really well and then add something. I think that's the mission of an artist and that's the mission of everyone who's in the music business. It's to add a little bit, inspired on all the great things that have been done in the past. So this record is actually exactly that. With Galandun, we mix three different genres of Uh, Trasmont music, they represent the northeast of Portugal, Trasmont, and we, we picked up three different kinds of music, three different lines, and mashed them up together. <laughs> I created a little harmony where there was just a drone in D and I created three different chords to go with that drone uh, in order to spice it up a little. So I created a verse. Then they had a theme that became the chorus by changing one of the chords. And then we played the theme, the actual theme, after the second chorus. <laughs> Like if you were if we were playing it in the street, we recorded that song, 
in a wine producing place. So a lot of uh, steel barrels were there, 5,000 liters, where they store the, the wine, but two of them were empty, so we used them as a reverb chamber, and it was super. Again, 12 tracks to record the band together. Great instruments. They had some fauna, Chabel, Pandeiro, so many great instruments. And we did a lot of overdubs, and I ended up finishing the song recording in a very, very um, touristic spot, which is super high in the mountains and with an incredible view, with an incredible sightseeing place. I recorded the last chorus of it there. And in Miranda, they speak a different language, and a unique language, the, the, the only other language that we speak in, the, in, in Portugal. Well, they only speak it there. So they are singing the, the chorus in Mirandish, which is that language, and I'm singing it in Portuguese. But at the end, we flip, and they sing it in Portuguese, and I sing it in Mirandish, or I try to do it because it's hard. <laughs> my fourth guest is an artist from Braga, from here, from my hometown, Daniel Christ, and he's been doing a huge, incredible job on traditional music, trying to make it up to date. He plays a lot of strings, instruments, and he sings really well. So he came up with, with an idea of a vira. Toca e canta e dança o vira de cá e a jota de lá. Com um cavaquinho e uma malga de vinho, anda comigo virar. Vira is an authentic style from this region, from Minho, basically, but is a lot pl played in Braga. And it's a three by four, so it's a waltz feel, but kind of a six, eight, too. It, it, it depends. And it's a very specific feel. You dance it. It's, it's, a, it's a music made for dance. With Daniel, we did it, and he, he showed me the song, and it has... It had like three parts. The, the thing he called the chorus ended up being the middle eight. The bridge that he had ended up being the chorus. And then we added a verse. I added some lyrics. I sang. I changed the melody to my singing. And it was really great. A huge band, two drummers or two percussionists, bass, another guitar player, me, ended up playing slide again, of course. An accordionist. And then Daniel... Uh, sang, of course, and played Cavaquinho and Bragueza. We got together at the end, everyone sang the chorus, we clapped, we overdubbed some percussion. Really, really great song. Did that in a really rustic rural uh, property from a friend of ours, really beautiful place. It's open air. It was very hot that day. It was really fun to do it. And of course, again, we did it live. After three, uh, two days of rehearsal, we did it on the third day live, all the band together. Mare Nostrum from the Algarve, so the south east of Portugal in this case, in their case, were my fifth guests. And it's the fifth song in the record, actually, because this is not the order where it, how it was recorded. Uh, they come from the Algarve, so really close to North Africa, so they have a lot of North African Arab influences in their music. But they Como 
procurar a poção But they also have uh, something called corridinho. And corridinho is a specific style of music played in the Algarve, very fast. Corridinho means uh, uh, running or very fast music because it's really fast. <laughs> It's of course music made for to be danced to. They are a great band and they are not traditional purists, so they merge their music with a lot of genres, jazz and stuff and world music. It's a very complex music. It has a odd, uh, an odd bar, an odd tempo thing on the chorus. It has three movements, three different things. So one is very Arabic. The verse is very Arabic. The chorus is kind of corridinho but strange time signature. And then at the end, we introduced the readings. Meals were a great, a very important thing about this record, this whole process. Because while we were having lunch or dinner, and this is very Portuguese to do, we were talking and I, uh, we were getting to know each other way better. And we were putting out some ideas in the table, actually, in the actual table. So we were talking about things, and I was getting the vibe of, of what we could do together. So I was always looking for a motif for the lyric. In that restaurant, there was a board, o tempo não volta, o que volta é vontade de voltar do tempo, which kind of means time doesn't come back. What comes back is the is you wishing to come back in time. So kind of that. It's hard to translate, at least for me. So that was like, okay, this is a great theme. Time doesn't come back. That's the name of the song. So I wrote that uh, in the way of, because it kind of resembles what I'm doing here. It's we, we, it's useless to live in the past because time doesn't come back. So we need to move forward. And that's what I sing in the verse. I'm sorry, that's what I sing in the chorus. But then for the verse, I was inspired by, we were living from the restaurant and the owner was talking about Madroño, which is kind of our whiskey or moonshine uh, here, and the Algarve especially. They are, the, they are very famous to do it. Algarve and Alentejo, they are very famous to do that drink. It's a very potent drink. Um, and he was talking about the process of doing it, how he does it. Super passionate, as passionate as I am about my music. So I, I, I was there like for 45 minutes listening to his experience to he, listening to him explaining uh, the process of doing it and how he does it, how he measures it. So all the verse talks about that. It's like, it's very precise. You need to do the potion. I call it the potion in the song. Um, 48 degrees, it's how you, it's the level of alcohol you need to get to the, get the best one. And then if you get a, a worst uh, madroño, you, sh you might let it go, uh, worst fruit, you might let it go to 75 or whatever, because it will be a lot more alcoholic, but less flavory. At 40, 48, it's very flavory, but less alcoholic. So then you, you mix them together and you create the potion, which is an art form in itself. So that was the inspiration for the lyric. And it came out in the last day. We recorded in a house with the mountains behind us, a very, very, very inspiring scenario and great people by the way. Pedro Mestre was my sixth guest and he's from the Alentejo so south of Portugal but not the extreme south actually he lives in the southeast too so close to Spain very hot super hot weather and so their songs are kind of slow because the weather is really really killing it uh, and it's also very cold in the, in the winter, so it's very hard to, to live there. But it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place. People are great there. F the food is unbelievable. 
It's so, so, so great. And they have a style called Kant Lintzhen, which kind of means uh, uh, Lintzhen singing or sing way. So singing from there, from the Alentejo region. It's a very specific way of singing, usually done by a lot of men singing. And they have the spontaneous uh, chant where they gather at local coffee shops and drink a lot. And then someone sings and everyone starts singing in harmony and everyone knows the lyrics. It's really magical. <laughs> So I went to Alentejo exactly to capture that, and Pedro Mestre is one of the biggest guys in that, and he also plays Campanissa, which is kind of a bragueza. It's a, a stringed instrument, double string, so fifth, five sets of uh, two strings. Minha linda pastorinha Estás na serra desprezada Anda bem para a cidade Se quer ser bem estimada Se quer ser bem estimada. He plays it really beautifully and he sings really well. So we did a song inspired on that Alentejo tradition. It's kind of our, it's it's our plain thing. So it's very plain and very yellow, the weather. They grow wheat, um, corn, and then olive trees. So it's, it's very, uh, agriculture is a very important thing on there. And the food and fruit are so great over there. Uh, so we inspired ourselves into doing that and in two days we did the song I was in a hotel well in a house um, but hotel and the house had a beautiful outside thing where we recorded it but we had to wait till 8 p.m. to start assembling things because it was so hot that we were unable to work all day so we had to wait for the 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 ending of the afternoon the coming into the night so we could work without dying from all the heat. Really great, really great experience. Pedro brought in three old men that sing, and the minute they started singing, it was like, this is the real thing. <laughs> It's unbelievable what they bring because you immediately feel that's the real thing. That's the it's incredible the authenticity they bring to the song. Mulheres do Minho is a group of women that collect old-time uh, music from Portugal and they reinterpret it just in a choir format and just women. So it's a great, it's a great experience because they are a really great collective and really good people. We did a song, I picked up a song of them called uh, Pedreiro, which means uh, stone worker. And it's basically a song that says uh, everyone has his job, no matter what. So 
you have your job, I have my job, let's keep doing it and let's accept each other. It resonates a lot with me because I feel exactly like that. We are all different. We all have different opinions. And no one is right. No one is wrong. It's just an opinion. As long as you don't interfere with anyone's life, I think that's very healthy to have different opinions about the same subject. <laughs> And then I created a chorus for that song. I used their melody for the verse. I created a chorus for that song saying, um, those who want everything end up losing everything. And a lot of times you already have anything and you think you have nothing. So it's enjoy the moment, enjoy life, enjoy living, enjoy what you're doing because sometimes you're already very wealthy and you don't know it. Quem tudo quer, tudo perde Quem tudo tem raramente o percebe Mais vale ter um na mão E os dois pés no chão yeah. Do Minho a Ria Formosa is an instrumental song means from Minho to Ria Formosa, two rivers, one at the north, the northest of Portugal. It's the it's actually the border with Spain, the north border with Spain, and one the southest of Portugal. So it reflects. I gave it that name because it reflects the traveling. I went from north of Portugal to south of Portugal, and it's an instrumental I did in a, in a building in Mosteiro de Tibães where I recorded the song with the band I'm talking next. It's a monastery, huge property with a lot of nature surroundings, really beautiful. And they had a, an abandoned house that was almost falling apart. It was a ruin. And they rearranged it, putting everything that missed being glass. So it didn't have walls, neither a ceiling. It had the first floor and the, the two walls in, in the extremity. So the side walls and the ceiling are all glass, so you can see nature all around you. But that room has an incredible reverb, natural reverb. So the minute I entered there, I, th I thought to myself, I need to record this and use this reverb. And then there was water running outside, so you hear it in the recording, and it was magical to, to do that. And actually, there's a lot of stuff like that, birds singing, dogs barking. I kept it all in the record. Um, a rooster <laughs> is in the record. I kept it all because it's part of the experience of being in Portugal. I did it with my Gil M240, I think it's a troubadour. I love that guitar, it's tuned in that song, it's tuned into open C, so it's very low. I played slide, I experimented some things, and it ended up be being an Arabic kind of vibe to the song. And it's the intro to the next song with the last artist, Bomes Com Alma. It's a group, uh, a percussion group, directed by my friend Rui Rodrigues, he is a percussionist and a drummer, and we're friends. We, we started playing together uh, at the very beginnings. We didn't know how to play, and we got a band together. Um, and he's, he's directing that group of percussionists. It's a lot of people, so it's almost 20 people uh, playing uh, traditional percussion. 
but he's taking it to the next level. He's making songs, writing songs, and creating patterns, creating rhythms. So for this song, I challenged him to do something, and he did a 5-4 uh, time signature for the verse and a 6-8, kind of the Vita, for the chorus. Well, basically, he did two rhythms and presented them to me. I thought, like, great, this is a verse, this is a chorus, and I created an arrangement, a vocal arrangement and a guitar arrangement to fit there. <laughs> It's the only acoustic song in the record, the only song I play acoustic, because it felt like that vibe, that Zeppelin meets traditional music. And I love it, I love it. I actually played piano, I overdubbed piano in, in a phrase in the middle of the song, and they are super powerful. The ground rumbles from, the, from all those big drums, it's incredible, uh, and I love that music. Well. That's it, my friends. I hope you liked it. I hope you want to watch all the videos and try to figure out what is what in that record. It, it was an incredible experience, and I had to share, I had to share it with you because I've been uploading the videos to, to my YouTube channel, and you're probably wondering why did I upload those videos, but it was what I thought it, I should do because... The whole record was recorded in video too, so I needed to put it out some way, and I guess my channel is probably the best way, and it's a gift to you. I hope you like it. Don't forget to leave the thumbs up if you like it, or if you want to become a patron or donate through the, the tip jar on PayPal, you're more than welcome, and I thank you a lot in advance. Bye-bye. See you next week. <laughs>